there's so much going on on today's show. Greg Foote's here. He's going to be turning Legend. some amazing roll Dahl magic into science with a giant peach, clearly. I want to have a look, first of all, mm. at James and the Giant Peach. Great book. Which is one of my favourites, absolutely. So, it's all about James and his amazing adventures on his Giant Peach. Yes. I've got a mini peach here, because uh, mm. what I want to look at first is there's a bit in the book where he manages to fly it using seagulls. Yeah, I remember. 502 seagulls yes. he uses, like this, you can see. All right. Right, so you want to do this experiment? I want to know, is it possible? Could amazing. 502 seagulls actually fly a peach? Well, in that case, let's bring in the seagulls. No, no, we're not. We're not doing that. Ah. No, instead we're using um, these helium balloons. Okay. So let's attach a helium balloon. See, helium is a lighter than air gas. Yeah. So uh, it's less dense than the air around it. So it, it flies up. It's got a little bit of a lift force. I think Radzi's hair might have helium. <laughs> I reckon it does. Does the peach lift? No. No. Let's try another one. Um, Can I help? Yeah, get ready, get ready. So let's attach this and see what happens because this peach is made of stuff. It's got weight. So gravity is trying to pull it down to the centre of the earth. Yeah. There's that force of gravity down. You've got to overcome that with a lift force. Two isn't enough. Three might be. Try a third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There we go. Three on. Gonna, have we got enough? You ready? Yeah. We got it! Hey. Whoa! OK, so That's this takes cool. three balloons to lift this little peach. Yes. Um, but what happens if we increase the size to this one? This is double the width. Double the width, so, so six balloons. Ah, so you think three times two, six balloons. Yeah. Well, actually, that wouldn't be enough. It would just stay there. And that's because, if you can just uh, hold that for me. Thank you. It's double the width, and it doesn't just double the amount of stuff inside. If you times the width by two, the amount of stuff inside goes up by two times two times two, which is? Two times two is four times two is eight. Eight. So we need eight times as many balloons as this one uses. Eight times three is eight times three. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Ramsey, do you have 24 balloons, please? Oh, yeah, I've got baby. them ready, Greg. All right, nice one. Let's leave that one there. Let's attach this to okay. these, and let's see. Let's just pot it down. Let's see if this works. I'm yeah, loving this show. Nice. Look, at, Look at that. Amazing. OK, so now let's take it up one more level. Let's James take had it... a giant peach, didn't he? did he? indeed. Let's yes. take it to one that's three times the width of this little one here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what's that going to take? Is that three times three times three? three? Yes. So three times three is nine, times three is 27. Perfect. Times the original three we had. Is 60 plus 21, 81. 81. Ramsey, 81 balloons, please. <laughs> Man, yes. I've got a lot of balloons. <laughs> OK, let's, let's see if this works. your normal day. 81 balloons. Oh, yeah, look at that! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. amazing! Greg, I love it when you come into the studio, it's amazing. So, of course, we've got um, these three peaches, but yeah. James's was mahoosive, wasn't it? It was. Could it have yeah. been lifted by seagulls, really? So, this is where it gets fun, because just using this basic mass, you need to know how big the actual giant peach was. Yep. Now, in the book, Roald Dahl says that it grew to be the size of a small house. So, let's say 12 metres across. Then some scientists at Leicester University have actually worked out how much mass, how much weight there would be. What would be that force on, of gravity? In real life, this yeah, is yeah, this is an actual scientific paper. This is amazing. Paper. Okay. And then what they did is they said, what lift force does a seagull give you, and how many do you need? And it's not 502. It's more, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually 2,425,907 seagulls. That's incredible, isn't yes, it? Yes, quite a few. Not kind of experiment you can do in the studio no. or on a live show. No. no. Greg, always a pleasure to see you. You're back later on as well, oh, aren't you, for another yes. Dahl experiment. Now, Greg, what have you got for us, my friend? OK, this one is inspired by Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. OK. In the book, you have three-course dinner gum. Yeah, it's a piece of chewing gum course, that you yes, chew, yes, yes. and first it tastes like tomato soup, then it turns into roast beef, then it turns into blueberry pie, yes. which is this, what Violet no. Beauregard eats, and that's what turns her into a giant blueberry. Yeah. Yes. So, I have been working so hard on this. You have your own courses of three course dinner gum. What real chewing Here we go. This is, yeah, you've yeah. made these. So just unwrap them for now and while you do it I'm going to explain what's in chewing gum, this right? You've got a bit of colouring, you've got a bit of flavouring, you've got some sugar, that's just icing sugar, wow. and this stuff which is known as gum base. Now this is actually top secret, the food scientists don't really tell you what it is, but inside it's a bit of wax, a bit of oil, that's and something right. called polymers, which is the same sort of stuff that you actually get in uh, plastic bottles, weirdly enough. Okay, so you ready? No. You're going for the... You've got a smile <laughs> face. What have you done, Greg? <laughs> Blue piece, they have not tried this at all before. So the blue one is the starter. Okay. So have a go with the blue. You've both got different things. Give it a really good old chew. Because as you chew it, you start warming it up. The flavours start coming out. Are we getting it? It's the starter. What do you reckon? Rads, go. I have no idea. I know I don't like that. Actually, no, no. It's actually okay. That's okay. What is it? It's it's like um uh something very sweet, something uh, blue cheese. With some sugar, obviously. It's kind of blue cheesy I kind of flavour. 
<laughs> what have you got? That's, uh, onion soup. It's kind of garlic bread. Oh, OK, yeah, I love garlic that. Garlic bread. That's OK, so that's a starter. And um, are you ready for the main one? No. Are you ready for the main one? Yep. As you're chewing it, as I said, it warms it up, it releases the flavours, but also it makes those polymers kind of spread out a bit. Oh, Barney, what a face. I know exactly what that is. I used to work in a restaurant where we sold it. What is it? It's chicken tikka. It is chicken tikka <laughs> flavoured <laughs> chewing gum. Yeah. I disgust him. <laughs> what have you got there, Rad? That's the worst thing I've ever had. <laughs> what is it? It's like roast potatoes. It's sausage and onion. Oh, <laughs> my God. I normally like sausages. <laughs> All right, okay, dessert quickly. Final one is uh, your pudding. Uh, so get ready for your pudding. It's much nicer, this one. Much, much nicer. Pudding. Okay. What have you got there? Vanilla ice cream. Yeah, you've kind of got strawberry and vanilla. So you've got a really lovely one to finish with. Yes, I like that. Thank you very much. Why do you think you've got a nice one? Oh, actually, yours was, yeah, yours was vanilla with a bit of banana and stuff as well. What have you got? Yours is really strawberry, I think. I put a lot of strawberry in Is it raspberries? One. Yeah, raspberry and strawberry. Amazing. There you go. Yeah. Does this guy get any cooler? Oh, so much fun. <laughs>